Wise Child by Monica Furlong. Chapter 6. Flying. September was a golden month. My hair grew longer. My face, which had looked so white and pinched, was rosy, and I kept being surprised at how well and glad I felt, at how much energy I had. I'm different now, aren't I? I said to Juniper, who smiled. We went on blackberrying expeditions, just as I had done with my cousins. We also collected cloudberries and blueberries, wineberries and elderberries, cowberries and red currants, hindberries and barberries, sloes and rose hips, cowberries and gilder roseberries, hazelnuts and sweet chestnuts, the last of which meant going out to a very secret place Juniper knew where there was a single tree. I liked picking berries. Not least because you could eat as you worked. My face was usually stained with juice that autumn. We also went to the shore several times and collected as much driftwood as Tilly could carry. We made a big pile of it in the yard. Juniper produced some thick woven materials and began to make me a cloak. We were getting ready for the winter. The days were shorter and darker, and about midday we would light our fire, milking Daisy in the late afternoons. I found my hands were cold, and I was glad to run back into the house. We came back from our food-collecting expeditions with mud weighing in our shoes. Juniper had started to teach me Latin. We will have more time for study when winter comes, she told me. Juniper was a wonderful teacher, partly because lessons got mixed in with everything else. She would draw a picture of the seas and countries around Britain so that I would understand the story of a voyage or a love story or a battle. She would alternate a piece of history with a fairy story so that my attention remained sharp. I puzzled over what was real. Did that really happen? I would ask Juniper, or was it just a story? Just a, st just a story, she would echo me mockingly. Are fairies real? I asked her. Of course, she said unhesitatingly. Well, why can't I see them? There are many kinds of reality, Juniper explained. Only silly people think there is only one kind. I don't live in the fairy realm, and neither do you. I live in two or three kinds of reality, though, so I expect will you. She did not explain this even when I begged her to. She was she could be quite obstinate about th the things she would and would not talk about. I might spoil something for her, you see. I might spoil something for you, you see, she said. One day, she said casually, Uni's coming soon. Who's Uni? I asked. Uni looked after me when I was a bit older than you, a bit the way I look after you. Is she a witch too? If you want to put it like that, yes. Was she kind to you? In a rather odd way, yes. I owe her my life, among other things. Even I was silenced by that, as also by the feeling that Juniper was struggling for words to tell me something else. Do you trust me, wise child? Of course, so completely had Juniper, ca Juniper captivated me that I found it difficult to believe I had ever been afraid of her. Would you trust me if I told you to do something you really hated, that scared you? Why would you do that to me? Because you would be glad afterwards. It would be very good for you. Only you wouldn't know that at the time, and I probably couldn't explain it to you. I don't know, I said. This was a rather disturbing conversation. Another disturbing conversation was one I had with Coleman, we were lying out in the hayloft as usual. We played sieges there, with one of us being the attacker and the other the defender, sweeping each other with bundles of hay. When we went, when we were tired, we pulled the hay over ourselves to keep warm and talked of all sorts of things. My life with Juniper, his life in the village. May of the Fair wants to see you, he said suddenly. What? My heart turned over with a feeling that might have been joy or might have been terror. I heard Gregor and Moreg talking. Gregor always liked Maeve, Moreg told me. Maeve has been on him, on at him to let her see you. Moreg was against it. Where is Maeve? It had not occurred to me to ask that question in years. As if it was she, as if she had dropped off the earth itself when she left me. She has a house on the island and another on the mainland. She is rich, you know, and many men love her, Coleman paused. My mother thought she should not see you, that you would settle down with Juniper and you should stay here until Finbar comes back. 
Gregor couldn't see the harm. They didn't know that I was listening, of course, but I thought you should be the one to choose. How could I choose? I could scarcely remember Maeve. I only knew I was afraid of her. Do you want to see Maeve? Coleman asked. I don't know, I whispered. I pushed the conversation down to the dark places of my mind and did not even tell Juniper about it. The next day, Juniper and I went into the garden and started plucking the leaves of henbane and the seeds of the thorn apple. I thought we weren't supposed to touch these, I said, disliking the smell of the henbane. As I said, there's a right time for everything, said Juniper. How do you know that uni's coming? I asked her as we chopped up the leaves and pounded the seeds in the mortar. There's an awful lot of this stuff, whatever it is we're making. A sort of ointment. I just know, that's all. In half an hour, a most awful smell filled the house, and I opened the door to let it out. Even the cats, who had begun to stay indoors a lot since the weather had turned colder, fled to the barn. It's disgusting, I complained. You're all likes and dislikes, said Juniper, as I was being entirely unre as if I was being entirely unreasonable. I privately thought that anyone would have disliked that smell, which was like stagnant ponds and rotten meat and stale sweat, as well as being cloyingly sweet at the same time. If I'd hoped Juniper might, Juniper might tell me to run along and play, I was wrong. After the cauldron had boiled and bubbled for a couple of hours, she sent me to fetch some beeswax. She placed the beeswax in a big bowl, softened it over the steam of the cauldron, and then... A little at a time began to stir the greeny-black fetid liquid into the beeswax. Eventually there was a bowl of brownish ointment, which smelled of wax now, as well as the herbs, and she seemed satisfied. Thank goodness that's done, I said, though I can't imagine anyone would use something that smelled like that. Uni arrived toward the end of the afternoon, a tiny old woman dressed in black. From the moment she appeared, I could not take my eyes off her, trying to see what Juniper had liked so much about her and how she might have saved Juniper's life. She was wrinkled, white-haired, and scrawny, and had lost several teeth. Her voice had a grating quality, and she smelled of something I didn't like much. Garlic? Mint? Cloves? It seemed like a mixture of all of them, but I couldn't, what I couldn't get used to was that she called Juniper by her real Cornish name of Ninoch. Charlie, this the child she said, staring at me critically, as I stood and wiggled in front of her, hating being looked at as if I were a horse or a dog. She doesn't care much weight, she said at last. She's quite fat compared to what she used to be, said Juniper, and she gets prettier and prettier. I know I wasn't very pretty, but it made me feel better that Juniper liked the way I looked. Is she useful around the house? Uni asked. Juniper, who liked to be truthful, considered a moment. She tries very hard, she said at She tries very hard, she said at last. And she's a good scholar. Ha! Uni said, and I could tell she didn't think much of book learning. I decided I didn't like Uni much, even if she had saved Juniper's life, and I crept out to the barn and talked to Daisy for a bit. When it got too cold, I went back into the house and slipped noiselessly past them and up the stairs to Juniper's bedroom in my own bed. But they were so busy talking, they scarcely noticed me. I might not like Uni, but to Juniper, she was clearly special. When I judged it was getting near supper time, I crept out onto the landing, meaning to go downstairs. Juniper and Uni seemed to be disagreeing about something. She's very young, Juniper was saying. Old enough, said Uni. I wish we needn't. You think it's a kindness? It isn't. I knew that they were talking about me, and I didn't like the sound of it. I coughed a little so they would know I was coming and walked downstairs. I thought perhaps supper would soon be ready, I said coldly to Juniper. There won't be supper tonight, Juniper said gently. None, I said disbelievingly. No, I'll explain why later. I was shocked, hurt, angry. We always had supper, and I was hungry. If I'd known sooner, I would have eaten more at tea time. To show how offended I was, I went back upstairs, and then, feeling sad, I climbed into bed without undressing and pulled my bedclothes over me. I lay there for a while, hearing the voices rising and falling downstairs in what seemed to be an argument, and then, because I was quite tired from all the work involved in getting ready for uni, I fell asleep. Hours later, it seemed, 
A hand clutched at my shoulder. I woke up in a fright.